Hey everybody, ECW fan here, and this is the latest Comic Finds volume. Now, if you've seen this volume, a couple of these issues, I think I showed them off back a month ago. So, I think there's like two issues maybe I showed in that whole thing, but the rest of these are brand new. And uh, I got these with when I was with Ed on our mission to Welcome Back Collectibles. And uh, I come in because Larry had his shed sale. And me and Eddie, okay, we're part of the eight. And we're, we're, you know, if somebody says, hey, could you do this? You know, we'll try to work each, with each other. And um, I had bid on a two things, actually. And one of them I was going to pick up that magazine I was going to pick up. And this big limited collector's edition thing with those, you know, those old 70s treasuries. He had gotten a, a Batman one, which... You know, uh, I was going to go for it first. And, I, and, you know, I resigned myself to the fact that I've got so many treasuries now that I just don't have room for them. So, I got a Marvel one. So, Eddie's like, dude, uh, do you really need that Marvel one? Because he's like, I need that in my collection. I've got so many of the ones that he showed me. I was like, you know what, man? I don't really have room for it. I'm going to let you have it. And, you know, cause that's the how the 18 is. We kick each other issues if, you know, if, they, if we're collecting it or if we need it. And he needed the collection, that lemon, you know, that treasury. And I went ahead and let him have it. I still picked up some issues from Larry and that Tales from the Shed. Because like I said, I, you know, I don't want to spend too much. I want more keys. I mean, Larry's got a lot of stuff. I mean, he's, he sells a lot of stuff through the shed. But there's a lot of stuff like, man... Be nice, but I don't really he need it. I mean, he had some good Nintendo games, some good video games coming through, but I was like, I just don't have room for it, and I don't have the money to go all out, as they say. As AEW would say, let's go all out, or all in. <laughs> no, no. But I'm going to show, the, I'm gonna show the, the comics here I picked up. And uh, as you know, you've seen this one in one video. It was Action Comics. 986 with Lex Luthor and Superman getting eaten nearly by a big big monkey. <laughs> this one is more or less I got this from from uh, Snooper's mom. It's not a big key I don't think unless the monkey some kind of key character will show up in the next Suicide Squad. Which was a damn good film. It's a shame pandemic hurt it. That would, that, hopefully it gets a sequel because even Eddie agreed it was good. I mean, he liked it. We both agreed it was a really good movie. Now, I wanted to pick up first appearances, and this happened in the nineties. And I, I was like, I want to find good, cheap value first appearances from Larry's. Now he's got a lot of great stuff, and there's a lot of stuff like I wish I could get, but I'm like I want value, and I want to pick up first appearances that no one would think about because you know eventually some Hollywood studio is gonna be out there like. Holy crap, there's this character, and we ain't put it in a movie or cartoon yet. And these two characters actually fit that. This is Dark Horse Presents, number 80, the first appearance of Monkey Man and O'Brien. A smart genius ape and his teenage girl sidekick. I'm shocked that we're not seeing this in an animated movie yet. And it's probably going to happen. I mean, I'm saying it now, and then you'll see it. Deal sign for Monkey Man and O'Brien cartoon. <laughs> It looks pretty cool. Arthur Adams created this character. Um, no idea, you know, if we'll see it happen soon, but with everything being optioned, I mean, heck, Netflix just put out a a, a live action, uh, crap, I can't think of the name of it from Vertigo, and I never imagined that would be made into it. I think it's, I can't think of the name of it. It'll come to me after this video, but they just made that and making Umbrella Academy and uh, all kinds of movie shows by Warren at, uh, Mark Miller. So, anything can happen. Pick up those first appearances, people. You don't know what they're going to make next. <laughs> now, this ain't a first appearance, but it came out in the 80s, and it's during John Walker's run as Captain America. Now, you've seen a little slight parallel in Winter Soldier, uh, Winter Falcon and Winter Soldier. This little parallel was... Where Walker loses his loses his crap and uh, kills one of the flag smashers. Well, the parallel to that is this issue. This is 
uh, Walker versus the uh, Watch Dogs. And uh, I think this is the issue where Walker's parents is killed. Possibly. Well, Walker goes off and he kills some of the Watch Dogs. And uh, he's, uh, he's not... Man, he snaps. <laughs> He, uh, he shows that he's really not meant to be Captain America when he's filling in for Steve Rogers. I, I, this is one of the hole in the Mark Greenwald run. I've got to get a few issues. I think Larry has them. I've got to look and try to get my run for that. Now, this issue come out in the 70s, and I didn't have it. And, it's, and Larry was surprisingly cheap on it. He didn't really ask for much for it because he's... He, I guess he, you know, he was nice on this one. <laughs> but it has a Jaws homage cover. It's Action Comics 456. And Jaws is attacking Superman. Literally, which they say, Jaws of the Killer Shark. <laughs> I guess they could, you know, Jaws of the Killer Shark. That is unique. That is unique. I like that. Plus, it has a green arrow and black canary black backup story. I used to love these backups. I used to flip through them when... You know, when I collect comics, and let me go to the back end of this one. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, uh, I used to love that where, like, half the half the times you'd look into um, World's Finest and you would see Green Arrow and Hawkman going at it, you know, arguing, which reminds me of me and Eddie at times for when we discuss the politics, and I'm like, I'm the more liberal side, and he's more... <laughs> He's more conservative side, and that's just how it is. It's just <laughs> but they'd help each other, you know. They'd be like, "Well, we gotta go fight crime." We have to put this. <laughs> that's what we do. We're friends, but we're gonna argue about this this crap. <laughs> but here we go. Uh, this this is the tales of the voodoo. I got this from Larry from the shed sale, and he, you know, well, he was cheap on it. I love this cover, and I actually, I, I'm glad I bid for it first, because there was another magazine, another Voodoo one he had, and I lost out. But I was so happy to get this bold, shocking terror with blood drippy scarecrow, the horror face. Oh, yeah. I love that. Larry's going to have another one in September. Sometime in September. I'm not going to be able to take part in it, because I'll probably be at work, but I'll try. <laughs> Hopefully it ain't going to be at work, but we'll see. Moving on, I picked up some comics now, some old ones. This is when we're going to get to the good stuff. I picked up Flash number 194. And here is, I love this cover. I picked it up for the Invisible Woman cover. I picked it up for the fact that for this devil marrying the Invisible Woman and Flash, it was like the broadcast two shadows. Ooh. That's just creepy. The broadcast two shadows. That is just a creepy cover, and that's why I picked it up. He had a lot of good flash issues that if I had more money, I probably would have went through real quick. But yeah, he had some great stuff. I mean, Larry has some great stuff. Let's see. I picked up this one on Eddie's recommendation because he said, Hey, it's an 80 page, 100 page giant. You love these extra big issues. You need to get it. And it was cheap, too. This one had Superman Trapped by Luther and Brainiac. And Superman, Target of the Prankster, which I love. And uh, it's got Super Chief in it. Super Chief! <laughs> this, yeah, this is Superman 245, by the way, which was a hole in my run. I need it. Now, now one issue I kicked like Eddie was a uh, first, I think it was Red and Gold Kryptonite. Because I was getting all these first appearances and second appearances, which I was like, Eddie, you can have it, man. Because he looked at it, and he's like, man, that's nice. And I was like, well, Eddie ain't getting no first appearances lately. And I was like, again, that's that 18 bond we have. If, if we see each other, you know, I was like, I was like hell, he's, he's he needs to find some something here. So I was like, here you go, man. I'll look for it again. Larry will probably get it again. He's probably got some more stuff there. <laughs> I picked up the first Bizarro Crypto. I love this cover, and I've got the Bizarro characters. I told Eddie, I said, I've got to get this one with Crypto. I said, I've got the first Bizarro Flash, Reverse Flash Bizarro, and I've got so many Bizarro characters. And uh, me and Perfect Double of Real Crypto, me hates Superboy. We'll destroy him. 
Yeah, you're evil, crypto. Bizarre crypto. I like that. Crypto, what's happened to you? You've changed with the destructive rotation of my pet super dog. You've become bizarre crypto. Bizarro. Or at least you say bizarro crypto. <laughs> but yeah, this was nice. This was nice. And as old as it is, it's, you know, the condition. Yeah, it's a little bit worn on the, around the sides here, but it's over 60 plus years old. I say it's about 62, 61, 62 when I looked it up. So that's a long time for a comic, man. I, don't know, I mean, we're, we're going, you know, we're marching into the 2020s now. And it's harder to find these old issues. Like, a, you're, you know, if you're like me that, you know, needs to find issues that you're not going to get them CG seed because there's no way I can afford that. And I, I've seen some CGC prices. Larry has them. And I was like, oh, boy, it's a little... It's a little hard on the heart. <laughs> but yeah, I picked up uh, Second Starro. The second appearance of Starro was Justice League of America 65. I love that cover. Now that I've killed the Justice League, what do I, will I do for an encore? And this actually has, um, I think, I can't think of his name. But Starro is in this issue. This is his second appearance, which... I looked it up. Yeah, it's his second appearance. I mean, at first, another issue was being considered it, but this they hold this one as his second, and they hold uh, Adventure Comics 451 as his third, I believe. 452. So, yeah, I was happy to get second star right? which I'm shocked, you know, being the villain in Justice League, and Larry was really cheap on this one, and this one is not going high from what I see. So, if you're looking, if you can't afford the first star right, which is... Raven the Bold 28, first Justice League of America. If you can't afford that issue, which I couldn't, <laughs> which I can't, and which I don't think I'll ever do unless I hit the lottery, then pick up the second appearance, which is going for cheap. <laughs> which It's mind-boggling. Go, go look up my comic shop. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Now, this is another issue I got weeks ago, and I actually showed this one off, and I actually traded a game to Larry and cleared this issue. I just got it from the Goodwill, which, again, your Goodwills can come in handy. So Larry was like, he looked at it, and he's like, yeah, I'll take it, because he's having his sale. I said, you can bundle it in at your shed sale and sell it with a Wii U, and he's, I guess that's what really, he's like, yeah, I guess that would be good. So... I cleared this issue. It's Fantastic 447, which is the first appearance of Maximus the Mad. Now, I have, don't hold me to this, I have the 46 or 45, which is the first Inhumans. So, getting the first Inhumans and getting the first Maximus the Mad is kind of nice. And I know those books are, you know, it's going to be a while again before Marvel tries a film of them again if they ever do. Uh, given how the the TV series failed spectacularly. I haven't seen the episode, but I've heard it was terrible. I mean, really terrible. Uh, but hey, Maximus the Mad, nice little villain. It's kind of cool to have him. Now, this issue isn't in great shape. You know, it's worn right there. You know, it's worn right there. But hey, again, when you clear something, you're not going to argue about it. So I got that one basically for trading the game. Now, this one is the key one that I really ha was happy to pick up. And I told Eddie, so I'm going to get this one because if you're following Marvel's TV shows on Disney+, Plus, this has been the big rumor for She-Hulk. She is going to be facing the Wrecking Crew. That's what the rumor is, that, that, that the Wrecking Crew is coming. And the guy that leads the Wrecking Crew is the Wrecker. And in Thor 148... This is the first appearance of the Wrecker, and this baby is in, I gotta say, it's gotta be in very fine shape. Larry, this one is just perfect. I was shocked, and what Larry had it for, I, I, it's gonna go up. It's gonna, it's gonna heat once it's, if you could find it, you know, uh, and I think they're selling them for like 20 bucks now. If you can find the first Wrecker, I'd pick it up. That first Wrecker and Wrecking Crew are gonna be the hot, the hot issue. So this was just had to go in with it. 
But that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the latest comic book finds. Uh, I'm very happy with what I picked up at Larry's. Uh, I picked up some nice issues. Maybe in a couple months I'll go there again and with Eddie and browse through and find some more nice stuff. Who knows? But thanks for watching. And if you like the channel, you can like and sub if you wish. I never push that. I always try to, you know, give just put out the videos for fun. This is what this channel's for. Till next time.